guys, it is Leia here from Covers, coming at you with Davis Sanchez. It is the Ches and Row Show, week five in the CFL. We've got three games on the slate. First game's kicking off tonight. How are we feeling about these lines, Ches? Because uh, I'm feeling like uh, the best part of these lines uh, is gone by now. <laughs> I was just about, that's exactly how I was going to kick it off. Like, just like juice squeezed out of out of all the stuff that we liked. Uh, that's even more reason to turn into our tune in to our Tuesday show where we where we give you the early lines. But yeah, it's there's been a lot of movement, but we still have some there's still some nuggets and some stuff to explain about uh, you know exactly what's happened in, in these matches, bro. So let's uh yeah, let's let's get at it, my man. Perfect. So first game tonight. One more thing got... so let me add this to I wanna add before we start. Sorry, bro. Uh, you know for those that uh, are betting betting in game at halftime, it's like fire. We'll probably at some point get in to do some stuff. Um you know, possibly at halftime, like me and uh, Adam used to do with NFL stuff. Possibly we do that at some point in time. But in the meantime, uh, feel free to for DM us um, individually, separately, whatever it is, to hit us up for some plays. Because you know, like I say, most of my stuff, the stuff that's real money, comes at, comes at halftime for me. Um, it's, it's usually the the five unit plays are coming at halftime for me. Uh, very rarely pre flop. So um, let's let's get a. a, a an idea of where we're going here today, but then let's uh, feel free to, to buzz, um, DM me and uh, and Rowan, and uh, if, you, if you're willing to give them out as well. Perfect. Yeah, there's actually uh, something I was going to uh, pick your brain about a little bit later, so we'll get to that later, but that's a nice little preview of what we're going to be talking about later. But for tonight, we're going to start off with the Stampeders taking on the Elks. Uh, Elks uh, looking uh, looking for another win against, uh, or looking for their first win, but uh, taking on a Stamps team that right now is unbeaten. Uh, Elks are at home. They covered the spread against the Stamps two weeks ago. Uh, that line opened uh, with Calgary at about minus three, seeing it as high as minus five now. Uh, this is one of those games where I think the value has gone now that it's uh, over a field goal. I grabbed the Stamps at minus three. Uh, one thing I'm uh, looking at, though, closely is the uh, total for this game sitting at 52, uh, but we could be in for some high winds and some rain tonight. So maybe hold off uh, on betting that total until we have a better idea of the weather. What are you thinking for this matchup, Chez? Yeah, when you have a head coach that's defensive minded, uh, one thing I've always um, felt like when I've been on those rosters is those coaches just don't want the offense. When they don't have a potent offense, they just don't want to lose the game. They want their defense that they control to have a shot um, to win the game for them. And that's that's what I think when I when I see Edmonton. And that's what you're going to get from them. They have a young quarterback who's athletic, who's uh, in his second start. They're not going to drop back and throw the ball a million times. They're going to uh, play everything close to the vest. They're going to run the ball, uh, short, quick passes. You saw last game, I think it was all the way to the third quarter. I was talking to my, my partner um, and uh, and – we made a point uh, that his first his first throw across the middle, Trey Ford, Edmonton's quarterback, first throw across the middle of the field uh, past 10 yards was in the middle of the third quarter. So, I mean, we're talking, yeah. you know, over a half of football. We didn't throw the ball down the field in the middle of the field because those are danger areas. So, um, I like Calgary in, in this game. I, I agree with you. The line is up, up at five now. I got it at three. But uh, I just don't see, unless you get, unless Edmonton turns the ball, Unless Edmonton can turn over Calgary and, and get some plays on special team, if they're going blow for blow offensively, I just don't see it. Edmonton's got a – Calgary's got a pretty good uh, back end and, and decent defense. They get Trey Roberson back at the corner, who is uh, top top three corner in the league as well. So I like Calgary. I don't see how Edmonton can can push the ball down the field in, in the vertical game. The only way they'll have success is, like I said, turn the ball over um, or, or on special teams. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I mean, just looking at these two rosters, I think there's a pretty big talent disparity between uh, the two teams. So, uh, you know, getting it at minus three earlier in the week was a uh, godsend. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't turn it down at minus 4.5, which you can still get it at some books. But, yeah, the best part of the line has gone. All right, let's move it on over to the uh, Friday night game. Uh, we've got the Ottawa Red Blacks still looking for their first win of the season, going up against the Rough Riders. Big line movement in this one. We talked about this one on uh, Tuesday. Uh, hit the board at uh, I believe minus ten for uh, the Riders. Uh, was quickly it was down to minus seven point five when we chatted about this on uh, on Tuesday. We still said we'd get it at anything over a touchdown. Now it's down to as high as minus six, but also as low as minus four point five. 
Uh, so this this spread's much much lower now. Uh, if I if gun to my head, if I had to make a play on this game, I'd probably lean towards Saskatchewan. Uh, Ottawa's got a bunch of injuries in their secondary. Uh, four guys, uh, two coverage linebackers, two defensive backs, both out of the lineup. Uh, their pass rush has probably been the weakest part of their t- uh, team all year. And uh, looking at this Rough Riders team, they can get after the passer. Uh, they play very well in the back end, very opportunistic. Uh, so if I was leaning anywhere, it would probably be on the Riders, which you can get at minus 4.5 or minus 5 at most books by now. Uh, but uh, I was definitely on the Red Blacks earlier in the week, and uh, I think that was the big play in this one. How about you? We're on the same page. And to just to further the injuries, uh, you're talking about Abdul Kenna, who is uh, – probably their best cover guy in the slot for Ottawa. He's out. And then their boundary corner, Money Hunter, who is a really good player. That's the son of guys who follow baseball. That's Torrey Hunter's son. Yeah. Um, And he's a heck of a player, too, one of the better better corners in the game. So those two guys out, that is the issue. Like I said, I was with on Ottawa early. That number was, you know, that was was a flat-out mistake. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's probably a no play for me. I I don't like Sass because... Their playmakers, uh, they just don't, they just don't have it down the field, and I think Cody Fajardo is, is uh, you know, below average. That's being nice. I think he's below average as a quarterback. I think, I think Chris Jones said something pretty similar in the off season. So I think uh, if Chris Jones uh, and you, you guys both know football very well. You guys say he's below average as a CFL QB. I'm, uh, I'm on board with that. I will say this about Cody, he's he's a gamer, you know, and I don't throw that word out lightly. You know, he 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 is a gamer. He's a great athlete. He was. He was the high school, he was California high school player of the year when he came out of high school. And if you look at the list of the guys, I looked on, the, I Googled the list of the guys who won it the years around him. It's some legit players, like guys, you know, in NFL top 10 picks, big names. So he is a player. He just doesn't have a great arm in, in, in the CFL. It just doesn't fly. But he's, he, he's a gamer, just not a great quarterback. Right on. All right, so let's kick it all over to the final game of the week. Uh, Battle of the Unbeaten Teams. Blue Bombers going up against the Lions. Uh, Open at minus four for the Lions. Uh, we talked about, there was a lot of chatter about this uh, line being off, but we talked earlier on Tuesday. We said, you know, the line was pretty much bang on. Uh, hasn't been much line movement in this one. Uh, Lions are sitting about minus 3.5 right now. Uh, Bombers coming off a short week. Haven't really looked that impressive. Uh, Lions have looked terrific, especially when it comes to their passing attack and their passing defense. Uh, so what are you thinking in this one? And then I'm going to pick your brain about uh, a little uh, second half play on the Bombers if they do get up ahead. Yeah. Uh, this is a, this is difficult because because I do I do I do feel like uh, I don't want to overreact, and I'm, I think I'm one when I when I when I look at games and and I cap games. I don't think I overreact to what I see. I'm fairly dialed in and don't get over emotional to what I've seen, you know, recency bias wise. So I don't want to look too much into BC, but I just, but, but I just, it's, it's not so much what I've seen them do, um, but it's the talent that they have and the, and the, and the weapons they have compared to, to Winnipeg, which yes, they've been, Winnipeg's been good and they've, they, they've, they've won games. They found ways to win, but I just don't see, I don't see them um, down the field making plays. I don't see, the weapons that I've seen before, um, I don't see the offensive line play that, I, that I've seen previously. Um, so I, I do lean BC, but I do it. It's not going to be a large play for me, and I would I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest it because uh, Winnipeg is very well coached. Um, they have a back to you know a back to back Grey Cup champion team with a with an MOP quarterback who's a vet um, who's seen it all. So uh, I think I think for me, bro, I don't know what, what you got here. BC is the play. Uh, I already have it, but it's it's a it's a it's a sprinkle play, and I'm not going to underestimate um, that coaching staff in Winnipeg and, and that roster. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Uh, BC, uh, I'm taking BC. It's a bit of a low confidence play on my part as well, but I'm definitely leaning towards them. Uh, you know, one thing is that the Bombers have really lived and died on forcing turnovers. And, you know, at some point that's, you know, that's going to dry up. I don't think that's something you can consistently get as, you know, as consistently as the Bombers have been doing for the last, you know, two, three seasons. So it's uh, it's tough to rely upon that to win close games. And, uh, you know, that's something that I'm really keeping an eye on. But the second half thing I wanted to talk to you about, maybe not necessarily this game, uh, but an angle I heard you talking about earlier this week. Uh, when the Bombers do have a lead at the end of the first half, heading into the second half, 
Uh, you mentioned one of the best live betting uh, uh, plays, really, and uh, it's uh, it's fading the Bombers. So uh, dive into that a little bit and let uh, let our guys at home know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think it's uh, – they've been – so historically, the Bombers and I have been live betting on the CFL for a, a, a good amount of years. Uh, definitely not when I was playing. Uh, but, <laughs> but the Bombers historically uh, just – let their foot off the gas, and, and there's there's two reasons. So they're fading them in game is, is has always been a play I look at, or at least staying away from them if if, if you're on them. And uh, here's the two reasons why I, I feel this this happens consistently. One is is Michael Shea, their their head coach. He's a defensive guy, and uh, he's not a coach that's uber aggressive. And I don't think he, he likes to he doesn't like to run up the score. And, and I think he likes to just control the game and, and run the football. Uh, that's one one reason. Second, the second thing I think the biggest reason is is Zach Caleros, their starting quarterback, has had you know a whole lot of concussions. And when you've had that many concussions, and uh, uh, I think he's he's worried about his his career and, and, and he's concerned with getting hit. So when you're when he's up in the game, he's not he's not standing in there. And even at the best of times, he doesn't stand in and take shots. I think last time, last week, I saw him move around more than I've ever seen him move around. He was great in the pocket, um, but he won't take shots. So if he's, if you have a quarterback and you're up 14 or 17, and your quarterback is, is not going to get hit. Good luck. If they call the pass play, they can't run because their whole line's not been great. And if they're passing, as soon as he sniffs pressure, he's getting rid of it, and it's just not conducive to covering big spreads. Perfect. Yeah, might not be something that happens this week. I don't necessarily see them having a big uh, lead at halftime in this one, but definitely something to keep an eye on down the stretch, rest of the season. Uh, nuggets like that from Chaz. That's why uh, that's why we have you on here, my man. That stuff's so great. Live betting is just such a great angle, especially in the CFL. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this week, guys. Best of luck. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Make sure you tune in Tuesday, because like we said, that line movement is crazy in the CFL. You want to get ahead of these lines. Uh, other than that, best of luck, and uh, hope you guys crush it this weekend. Good luck, everybody. Let's get it. <laughs>